What up, Sackers? Big Sack McGee here. How are you doing today? It is Sunday afternoon, and I was just about to do some stack maintenance. I got a little shipment in of some airtights, um, and I wanted to take some recent acquisitions and put them in uh, capsules so that they can be uh, stored safely. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go ahead and uh, do that. First, and I'm going to just may have a couple of musings here on this uh, Sunday afternoon. But first, quick show and tell. Um, you've seen this in recent videos, but here's my gold one ounce. Onza from 1981. Awesome heavy gold coin there. And then the baby brother here, the half ounce gold, Liber not Libertad, yeah it is. Half ounce gold Libertad, and I was thinking the uh, 20 pesos, but no. Okay, so we have the one ounce and the half ounce. And then I also had picked up this uh, 1896 Gold Eagle back in, uh, I think it was December. So I needed some capsules for those specific coins, so I decided to uh, look online. Now, I, there's several different places that I buy coin supplies from, but thanks to uh, uh, some viewer comments, I was turned on to this person, uh, this business, on Fire Guy. And uh, the thing I like about this place is that the shipping is low. So if you want to buy just a couple of capsules, you're not paying some minimum $7 fee for shipping and things. So uh, very, very happy about that. So give them a look. Um, no endorsement of any kind, uh, or I should say no paid endorsement, but I, I do like uh, their business and they ship very fast. So, um, yeah, so I just want to talk a little bit here. I had mentioned in previous videos that, uh, you know, my stack philosophy is changing um, bit by bit. Um, well, I, I won't say my stack philosophy. I still, I still believe in the reason that I stack. Um, but I, wanna, I guess what this leads me into is a conversation about risk aversion because when I first started getting into stacking partly was due to risk aversion now people would say some people would scratch their heads and be like I don't know stacking precious metals seems risky but the mentality of a stacker at least in my in my opinion or how I should say this my mentality is simply that the dollar and the dollars that I've earned that sit in just uh, whether it's a savings account or whether it sits in uh, in uh, cash that I have at home or whatever is just getting devalued and uh, it buys the purchasing power goes down and down. So understanding that the value of gold and silver, it's, it's not like it gets more valuable or less valuable. It's like the same value. That's the idea is that it tracks. And so I just wanted to have something concrete, something tangible to be able to put uh, my dollars in that aren't just going to sit and get devalued over time. Especially because a lot of this, like in specifically my stack, is primarily either for retirement and or to pass on to uh, the next generation. So in, in my mind, um, stacking is risk averse. And that's why I really got into it. Um, I also, especially at the time, um, post-2008 crash and all that kind of stuff, um, you know, everyone was really kind of nervous about markets and all that stuff. Right now, everyone loves it. It's like best all time, you know, for the for the Dow and the markets look great. Is it going to stay that way? I certainly don't think so. But it doesn't mean I'm not in invested in the markets right now. I have pulled back a lot. Um, I'm not a massive uh, stock trader or anything like that. I do own some individual stocks, um, but most of my market. Um, Investments were in the form of index funds. Like I really liked being in the S and P, like I, as low cost as you can get, S and P track uh, index tracker. And so I actually had all of my kids' college funds put into that, um, and did really good over the last eight or nine years, which is great. Um, but recently, I've moved those investments to just the interest bearing because so my kids are getting very very close to college age. You know, within three years. And so, and plus the market's at an all-time high. I don't feel like the, the risk of the little bit more that I could get in the short term outweighs the risk of having some kind of correction happen this year. And, and you know, people would look at me and be like, oh, you can't time the market. And I agree, I, you can't. But I'm kind of playing the odds a little bit. And, you know, the money that I have in there is substantial. And I just think, I feel like it's about to be used. You know, I, it was different when I, I started saving in uh, my first child's uh, I created a 529 plan the month he was born <laughs> and uh, been contributing to it every single month for the last uh, 15 years. And uh, it's generated a pretty good return. In fact, um, the amount of return on investment is more than 100%. So 
um, the account itself, uh, more than half of the value of it comes from the investment, you know, accruement of interest um, or value, which is fantastic. But I just, I'm, like I said, risk averse. and I don't want to see anything happen to that because he's about to use it soon. Um, but yeah, that's why I stack too, is that I, I feel like it is a, a form of risk aversion. Um, my wife and I were a lot riskier, I guess, when we were first married, and we have learned to not, um, not like that feeling of being risky with money. So, um, which is why it feels amazing. I think I mentioned in my last video that we made our final mortgage payment, and uh, what does that feel good? And uh, for years, um, we had been making double mortgage payments. So however much the mortgage cost, we added on double. And then recently we went more than double. We were paying about uh, $1,200 extra per month uh, for that stuff. And it was, um, it was really, oh, this one is actually a little bit too big. I forgot the right size. Let's see here. 27 millimeters. This ring seems, I may have to get a different one. Let's do this one first. At any rate, um, we were paying over a thousand dollars extra, eleven hundred, twelve hundred more than we needed to for our mortgage, and that was obviously making the uh, the principal go down quite a bit, um, which feels really good. Um, I kind of being a nerd with numbers, especially when I first bought a house, I made charts out of if I added this much, it would be this if uh, per month, and there would be this much less interest over time, and that's what really got me hooked. So. If you're interested, go to some place um, like bankrate.com or look at any kind of online amortization calculator when you're about to buy a house. Or if you're just uh, in your own house and you want to kind of see what's headed, um, you, know, you, you use your length of um, term for your mortgage. You use the uh, interest rate that you have through wherever you're getting your mortgage from, and you can project out total amount of interest paid over the life of the loan. And it is insane. If you have a 30-year mortgage or worse, a 40-year mortgage, and you're making minimum payments, you're going to end up paying triple what your house is worth by the time it's all said and done to pay for your house. So it's like, I'm going to take 40 years to pay this off. Okay. Um, same thing with car loans. Of course, it's just a much smaller situation. But I hate paying interest to banks for the privilege of having something now. So at any rate, um, looking at those amortization calculators, I was you know I showed several different examples to my wife, and we were both like, let's just get this taken care of as soon as we possibly can because I don't like paying that large amount of interest over time. The problem is we live in a society that doesn't really understand that. It's more about what's my monthly payment going to be and less about how much total am I paying. And that's true for credit cards. It's true for houses and all that kind of business. But um, having gone through that process, you know, when we're looking at the numbers, we were willing to go without for a long time in terms of, uh, I say go without, let's just say maximize how much we were paying towards our house. And I'll be honest, my father was not a fan. He's, uh, you know, really good with taxes and all that kind of stuff. He's like, you're, gonna, you're losing your tax advantage, you know, of mortgage interest if you pay it off too soon, you know, because by the time you get to where you're paying it off, you're going to lose that as a deduction. And I, I just didn't understand the value of, you know, having that... Um, you know, be such a huge deal, you know, back when we could itemize and all stuff. And you still can itemize. For those of you that aren't here in the United States, you know, we had recent uh, tax law changes. And to be honest, had we still had our mortgage uh, interest for like this year, it wouldn't have mattered in the, uh, in the slightest because we're not going to have done enough to have more to itemize versus the larger standard deduction that is now offered to us So through the new tax plan. Um, so I'm really glad I got out of it anyway because that kind of that advantage went away. Um, if you have a huge amount of student loan debt and interest and, and a massive mortgage, you're paying a lot of interest, I suppose you could potentially approach that. Um, and of course, you know, that plus gen, you know, charitable giving and things like that, you might be able to itemize and get more than the standard deduction, but I wouldn't even be close. So no student loan interest, of course, and uh, now no uh, mortgage interest. But bottom line is, uh, for my wife and I, we really prioritize risk aversion when it comes to uh, not only how we spend our money, but how we choose to save, how we choose to invest, and all that kind of business. Um, I am all for growth funds and like emerging markets and things like that when it comes to a situation that I feel can yield um, good fruits, we'll say, um, from a market standpoint. I just with everything at the top right now, plus some of these, I don't know, I guess just let's just say turmoil in the world, you know, um, unrest and, and things going on with 
I mean, I, everything from coronavirus to um, the political division here in the United States, and it just it doesn't seem like a good time for me to dump everything I have into the United States markets and assume that it's just going to keep going up and up and up. I hope it does because most of my retirement funds are invested in the markets, and I don't have a whole lot of choice over that um, because uh, I'm part of a, a situation where I have a my retirement money is managed by my uh, the place that I work for. Um, which is great, I don't have to think about it, but uh, I actually kind of pretend like that money's not even there when it comes down to it. Um, but bottom line is, um, like I said, risk aversion. So that's, that's my Sunday musings uh, for today. I was able to uh, encapsulate two of these. I'm going to have to re-check um, out this, this uh, half ounce gold Libertad. It's bigger in diameter than the Gold Eagle, and uh, unfortunately the capsule I just bought doesn't fit that one, so I'll have to get uh, one size bigger. And... Um, perhaps a 28 millimeter. And uh, I guess that this last 27 millimeter one, I guess I'll just have to buy another Gold Eagle along the way. So that's it for right now. Uh, if you have any questions, I was kind of rambling. I apologize if it was incoherent at times. I'm trying to, uh, as I'm fiddling with things here and I lose my track of thought or whatever, but uh, I just appreciate uh, you guys watching. Um, any kind of discussion that comes from this, I'd be happy to talk about that in a future video. If you have questions on why I do anything with anything I've talked about if you or you want to dispute the maybe the wisdom of paying down your mortgage so fast or whatever um, you know go ahead and come at me in the <laughs> in the comments I will say this it's certainly nice having almost uh, two thousand extra dollars per month to not put towards a mortgage it feels pretty incredible and here I am in the first month of it and uh, man it feels rich it's awesome all right folks big stack McGee thanks for watching and we'll be back at you soon take care